So today we have Shrikant, you know, the global managing director of uh, DXC Technologies uh, and the global head of workforce management for uh, DXC Technologies. Shrikant, welcome. Thank you. Um, we are here to talk about uh, agile leadership, right? Um, so can you tell us a bit about what really is agile leadership? Yeah. The agile leadership is a, basically a set of competency. Sure. It is a mindset sure. which every leader need to have it in today's VUCA world. If you really look at today's world, is moving very fast. Sure. Unlike uh, 10 years back or 5 years back, the pace of business sure. is very, very fast. So right. the leader need to be very agile to manage sure. that pace of business. Sure. Second one is the disruption happening across the business and across the geography is very high. Sure. The disruptions around technology, sure. the disruptions around business models, right. disruptions around geopolitical situation, you have seen Brexit, Trump coming in, a right. lot of disruption happening in the political right. and uh, uh, geographical disruption happening. A sure. lot of disruption, uh, disruption happening in terms of demography. Right. Uh, the younger workforce is coming much faster than earlier. True. Even some of the geographies, uh, the people are not retiring early. True. In some of the geographies, people make wealth and retire fast. Yeah. So the employee demography also is a disruption today. True. You so, have the multi generation workforce, exactly. which, is, which is working. Working the same period in an organization. True. True. So all this disruption require agile thinking True. and agile leadership to manage True. the business. Right, right. So how does one really define it? And also, you know, if you were to require to assess agile leadership, mm -hmm. right, is there a way of really defining and assessing agile leadership today? Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting question. Sure. Uh, first one, from my experience, you know, if you really track back the agile methodologies or agile systems and process hmm. came against the waterfall thinking right. or waterfall methodology. Sure. And most of the agile learning today came from lean manufacturing of Toyota and GE. Right. Now, the agile methodology is prevalent in every industry, not only in manufacturing, sure. not only in technology replacing waterfall sure. methodology. Sure. It is prevailing in service industries, it prevailing sure. in education systems, it prevailing in government businesses. Sure. So, every aspect of business today require agile thinking. Sure. So, if you ask me, how do you define agility? Sure. The way we need to define agility from two perspectives. Sure. One is agility requires a set of competencies. If you ask me, these competencies are not only functional competency or methodologies, right. this also a set of behavioral competency. Absolutely. The second one is once you define in form of competency, sure. the agile leadership requires capacity. Sure. For example, one of the basic principles of agility is you tend to fail early right. and accept this failure. Sure. Or prepare to fail very early in terms of transformation rather than later part of the transformation. Right. So when you fail, sure. how can you learn very fast in this failure? Sure. And how can you really get up with the resilience in this failure and sure. move faster than you did it before failure? Right. So it's a capacity. How do you bring that capacity? Sure. You know, uh, the, one of the concepts we use in agility is sprint. Right. That means you have to do daily scrum. Sure. And you have to meet very uh, frequently, like weekly or fortnightly or monthly, sure. in terms of releases and in terms of impact to the business. Sure. So when you run it at a sprint level, you right. require a capacity. True. To you cannot get burned out after sure. the first month, or you cannot get burned out in after one quarter or one year. True. How do you sure. really create an agile mindset where you hit right. by a disruption? Right. or you hit by an opportunity sure. and and this disruption and opportunities are very frequent in today's business sure. and sure. how do you really build that capacity right. uh, to uh, overcome certain changes in the business or right. deficiencies in the business is in some ways it's also about resilience right resilience, it's about exactly. the building that resilience yeah. resilience as part of the capacity and resilience is also a competency interesting interesting yeah. uh, the next one uh, is first one is the uh, what you call as competency sure. second one is the capacity Sure. And uh, the third one is what do we call it as the confidence. Right. Ajay leaders have a tremendous confidence sure. that they can get over any kind of disruption, right. any kind of uh, what do you call it, uh, turbulence, any kind of uh, roadblocks they can get up. Sure. So the definition of Ajay come from competency framework, sure. it come from capacity sure. and the last one is the confidence. Absolutely. But in my learning, you know, one cannot replace other. Right. For example, right. you have set of competency. I have seen a lot of leaders have agile competency, sure. but they did not build a capacity in their organization to right. become agile. Right. They right. did not create that culture to become agile. Sure. I have seen set of organization where leaders have the competency 
right. they build capacity but they lack confidence sure and sure. vice versa sure. also sure. sort sure. of my definition my experience agile leaders or agility is all about competency capacity and right. confidence interesting interesting that that's put very succinctly right yeah. now for organizations yeah. who are looking at developing agile leadership you know mm -hmm. in the talent pool mm -hmm. how does one go about it right is it first of all is it something which can be developed really yeah. or is somebody is it something that somebody is born with yeah i think it's a very good question uh, i'll step back a little bit sure. the first one you need to acknowledge that the earlier or a traditional management systems and practices are disappearing right. for example if you trace back uh, when we are students of mba we studied many sure. principles of management which shows that division of labor is very very important uh, that means you know you have compartments like hr finance sure. sales manufacturing procurement sure. then next one is uh, delegation of authority that means you sure. say that you have to delegate sure uh, to in the military hierarchical format right. the uh, ceo delegate the authority to the next level the next level delegate so the delegation sure. of authority sure the third one is unity of command sure uh, we studied as a management students unity of command that Correct. means uh, you have to take direction from one boss one you person. cannot take it absolutely. from multiple boss absolutely today if you really look at the management principles today it's right. against all the three things we discussed correct it doesn't believe correct. unity of command because sure. you have multiple bosses sure. we call it as matrix Organization, organization or a virtual organization where you get direction from many people sure and you sure. also need to give direction to many people so sure. when i did this transition from a waterfall thinking or traditional management principles to new management principle right a lot of people really got confused you know, how can i sure. get direction from two bosses sure some of sure. sometimes the directions are not complementary right. conflicting directions you get it right then how do you work in such a environment is very very important So right. we have to acknowledge that the management principles and sure. management systems, right. which was designed in a hierarchical organization, is disappearing, sure. and more collaboration, virtual teams are coming. Where sure. some of the principles I mentioned is very very important. Right. The second one we need to acknowledge that the pace of business is changing. Sure, sure. Uh, I was mentioning uh, uh, today morning also. Right. If you really look at uh, there was a research done uh, how fast people walk. Correct. If you really look at uh, uh, five years back, the pace of walking right. improved improved by ten percent. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, because people create a sense of urgency because driven right. by the environment they operate in. Right. Similarly, right. there was a research done fifty years back, chicken hatching and today chicken hatching four times improved the cycle time. Ah, okay. Today chicken hatch very faster than sure fifty uh, years back. Sure. The second, third one I was mentioning in terms of I come from automobile industry, I worked in Toyota. Right. Uh, Toyota used to release the new cars three to four years. Today they can release in three to four months. Right. And even in the technology side, new technology is coming to marketplace. Sure. In fact, I can say every week new functionality, uh, sure. new hardware, new software sure. is coming in. So sure. the cycle time of business is changing. It's, it's shortening. It's shortening. Right. And here key word is acceleration or a speed. Right. right. So in both context, the business models are changing. Sure. The pace of business is changing. Right. There, we require agility as one of the competency which leaders should possess. It. Sure. That's a context of a need for agility. Sure, sure, sure. And you know, in this in this changing environment, in the changing world, right? Um, you know, how should HR be driving leaders to become more and more agile in their respective organization? Because yeah. somewhere we talk about HR, you know, being in the driver's seat when it mm -hmm. comes to you know leading organizational change. What can HR do specifically to be able to make their leaders more and more agile? Yeah, that's an excellent question. If you really look at it, HR, uh, plays a very important role in an organization. Yeah. Not only from designing systems and processes, yeah. uh, which is required for an organization. I'll give a little example on that. Sure. Uh, prior to joining DXC right. or Legacy CSE, sure. I was the CHRO and CIO for Britannia Industries. Right. If you really look at Britannia Industries, uh, two to three percent of the cost is a labor cost. Sure. The balance cost is. Material cost like wheat, sugar, laminates, sure. and everything, sure. or manufacturing cost or supply chain cost. Sure. In DXC today, right, sixty-five to seventy percent of the cost are labor related. Right. Right. So going back into Britannia's context, sure, the way I can impact on labor related budget is two to three percent. Sure. But I have a huge opportunity impact. Hmm. What do you call it as? A non what you, intangible assets of an organization like sure. culture, sure, skills, leadership. Sure. Uh, discretionary efforts of employees, right. branding, and everything. Right. So HR need to design systems and process for managing labor cost and impact to the business. Sure. As well as HR need to design systems and process to manage intangible assets of an organization like culture, right. leadership, right. Uh, talent, etc. Sure. So 
today's world in DXC also, I right. have 60 to 70 percent of my cost of business is labor cost. I have a huge opportunity to design systems like right. how do I hire? Sure. How do I compensate? How do sure. I promote people? How do I skill people? Right. How do I uh, teach people new technology and everything? I have huge opportunity. Sure. Similarly, also have it's since the knowledge or a people business, sure. discretionary efforts of people, their culture, leadership is also equally important. Sure. So, uh, cut the point short. You know, HR need to manage both uh, discretionary impacting processes sure. as well as the the hard data like labor cost, like sure. compensation, benefits, welfare measures and everything. So sure. HR manage that process. Sure. Second one is coming back into HR build or a partner with the business in building next generation leaders. Right. So in both building next generation leadership competency and human capital process which drive tangible and intangible measures of an organization, sure. HR can bring that agility sure. or agile thinking. Sure. in the organization. Sure. Like you earlier mentioned, right. one of the competencies today's leaders need to have it is resilience. Sure. 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 Resilience means you tend to fail Correct. in every aspect of business. Correct. But do not... How uh, soon can you bounce ex exactly. back? Exactly. How yeah. soon you can bounce back. And yeah. when you fail, what is the learning you are having it? Yeah. But if you look at back in the traditional management system, it says plan in a such a way that you don't fail. Right. And in such a scenario, when you fail, you sure. have a kind of worry that way my planning went bad. True. As a result, you know, I had a bad bad planning. Right. So I will I will cover the True. failure so True. that nobody is visible and they will not penalize for my planning. Right. Today is an right. agile world we are telling even the best planning in the world will fail. Right. And ensure that you fail early, not Correct. later part of the business. Right. Fail early. Right. And learn from that failure. Sure. And get up and run it faster than what you did before the failure. Sure. It's called the resilience in a short way. Absolutely. So this kind of behavior, the another important competency for a leader today is uh, how fast you can learn. Sure. That means we say that every day come to organization, prepare to learn. Sure. Don't wait for somebody to teach you. Right. You go to the organization, prepare to learn. It's one of the concepts of agile leadership. Sure. So once you invite that, I am prepared to learn, right. every opportunity in the organization is a learning opportunity. Sure, sure. In traditionally, we believed classroom training or e-learning as a learning opportunity. Right. As an agile leader, you walk into the organization, sure. every step you take, you'll find a learning opportunity. Sure. A conversation sure. two employees are having in the lift right. or elevator, you listen to them, sure. great learning opportunity. Right. You can go to cafeteria and see the way people are eating food. Sure. The way they are sitting together and right. the kind of conversation having, sure. it's a great learning for a leader. Sure. Then you go to the marketplace. For example, when I was in Britannia, I used right. to visit a lot of marketplace like Kinara shops sure. or a modern uh, trade formats like big bazaars of the world. Sure. So when I go, I always look at you know, how is Britannia products looking sure. in the uh, display, right. uh, how people are buying. I used to watch, then my wife used to say, hey, what are you doing here? We came <laughs> to shop. I said, no, let me see some of the behavior right. uh, in customers are doing it in terms sure. of display. Sure. So. Uh, leader need to prepare to learn every day sure. and see opportunity to learn every time. Right. Similarly, as a leader, you need to prepare your organization to learn also. Right. right. How do you create environment where your team and employees sure. learn every day sure. is another important thing. Sure. Then another uh, important concept of agile leadership is sure. reflection. Right. right. That means you may do daily scrum or a uh, weekly sprint or whatever the terminology right. uses that's, in that's your management important. system. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you need to reflect back. Hey, what sure. did I do well in today? Right. And what are the opportunity for me to do better tomorrow sure. from the learnings I had it? Sure. So that is, we call it as the reflection. Mm, absolutely. Then the last point, some of the competency we work on is called responsive. Right. Agile leaders are very responsive. Right. Responsiveness comes from two dimensions. Sure. One dimension is time. Right. Earlier, it takes 10 days. Today, can I do it in one hour? Because right. I said the pace of business is changing. I right. cannot have or I cannot afford 10 days, right. how can I do it in one hour? Right. That is the call, the, the clock time of responsiveness should be faster. Sure. Sure. Second one, responsiveness comes from accountability. Sure. As an agile leader, are you responsive enough to your actions? Absolutely. Do you own it and learn it from and change it? Sure. It's another example of agile sure. competency. Sure. So Standing up and being accountable, so important, isn't yeah. it? And, and most people tend to miss that. Exactly. And agile leaders, I have seen it, you know, they are accountable and right. because they see every Failure is an opportunity to learn. Absolutely. And they invite failure at a very early part of their life cycle right. of product development or transformation. Sure. Everything. So, sure. in my uh, learning in uh, organization, worked in companies like GE, Toyota, right. Right. Philips, Britannia, now in DXC. Right. Um, agile leadership 
is visible. Sure. Agile leadership is present when you walk into an organization. Once you walk into a leadership meeting, right. you can really see whether the leader is agile. Sure. Because that energy is, you can watch and see and feel it. Right. So agility is a culture. Sure. Agile leadership is a presence. Sure. And you can feel it in an organization. It's not a right. methodology. Right. It's not a competency dictionary along. Right. Right. Uh, it's an energy. Right. Uh, agility right. is an energy in an organization. Absolutely. That's very yeah. well put. And yeah. you know that, that energy will be so so visible and, and palpable yeah. in, a, in an agile organization. Yeah. Um, however, if you look at you know the landscape of Indian organizations today, you know, uh, where do you think uh, you know they are in, in, in a continuum, so to speak, of, of agility, mm -hmm. right? Do you feel that you know leaders are fairly agile or there is a considerable amount of roadblock? You know, not only maybe in leadership capability, mm -hmm. but maybe in the whole environment, right? In, in which yeah. leaders operate in, yeah. right? What needs to change, Rikant? Yeah. You know, a couple of things. It's a very interesting question. Sure. The first one is we need to acknowledge uh, agility is more than a methodology sure. replacing waterfall. It's a way of life. Right. So that's I have seen many organizations in this continuum. Sure. Somebody still waterfall thinking or waterfall methodologies or right. traditional management principles like unity of command, delegation of authority, and all sure. these things. It's very uh, hard to or let go. Yeah, let, let go. They come from yeah. that thinking. Right. And some companies have accepted that we need to be an agile organization. Right. They started training a lot of uh, their employees and managers in terms of like Scrum, sure. uh, Scrum Masters, agile methodology replacing waterfall and right. everything. But I've seen very few people really got into the right extreme, sure. moving from waterfall to agile methodology to agile culture. Sure. Sure. The real benefit an organization get it right. is once you really transform from waterfall to agile methodology to agile culture. Right. And that's the reason I'm a very big fan of agility as a behavioral competency rather than a methodology. Right. So it's so important. So I don't name companies, you know, sure. uh, you, you can really feel it who is sure. still practicing waterfall right. and old management principles like sure. delegation of authority, unity of command, division sure. of labor. Sure. And some companies are moved towards uh, Agile methodology, they teach right. Scrum, uh, they teach Agile methodology, replacing waterfall. Right. But very few people or organization are more in the right extreme where they can say that I'm sure. Agile culture. Right. And the way I work, the way I think is very Agile. Right. And uh, that energy is visible to customers, that energy is visible to employees. Absolutely. That energy is visible to investors. Absolutely. There you go. So that's, that's essentially about what it takes to make um, organizations much more Agile. Um, you know, it's it's as as she can't put it. it yeah. It's not it's not just the methodology, but really it's something which um, which is an energy which which becomes so palpable in organizations which are agile. Right. Thank you very much, Shrikant, Thank you. For Thanks for inviting thoughts, me. Right? Thank you. Yeah. Um, very nice hearing. Thank, Thank you. you.